Welcome to MTV's In Focus. I'm Bradley Valenaki. Tonight, a multi-billion dollar industry, sand mining, and a foreign company looking to mine sand on the coast of Medang province. On the program, we look at how the affected communities have responded, the interest groups associated with the communities, and the awareness that's needed to better understand this. Are uh, our laws adequate? Here is the response from the authority. The chromite bit sand deposit down at Lababia. There is also uh, magnetite uh, or black sand deposits along the Amazon Bay in central, central province and stretches right across to Millen Bay. Uh, but uh, there are no clear laws governing uh, the uh, development of uh, the bit sand deposit. However, uh, we have been applying uh, a basic law governing uh, the alluvial mining sector and in fact in this country the only uh, metal that has been mined uh, under the alluvial mining activities is really gold and silver. And now joining me in the studio, former Chief Justice and Attorney General Sir Arnold Ahmed and Mr. Magun from the local NGO Makata. Gentlemen, good evening and thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you, Bradley. Yeah, okay. So, Arnold, first of all, um, there is no law on sand mining uh, in the country. For companies, mining on, on a large scale must be concerning. Yeah, it is. Uh, like many other developmental projects, one comes to mind also in the mining sector is deep sea mining. And now we've got this proposal for um, sand mining, neither of which have uh, specific laws. And so the governments have been using the Mining Act uh, generally to um, give licenses for this the deep sea mining. We, we have an issue going with uh, Nautilus and Solwara One. And now this proposal, as I understand, it's being proposed to be administered under the Alluvial Mining Act. Must be uh, of concern because alluvial mining leases are a completely different topic altogether when we're talking about sand mining, which is obviously different. Yeah, quite simply, um, there being no policy, firstly, and secondly, not the legislative regulatory framework to manage uh, its uh, environmental impact and governance, monitoring, all of that that uh, we have under different legislations for different extractive industry um, resources. So for, from your point of view, it's, it's somewhat illegal uh, to try to uh, categorize this, these two different topics under one? Well, I think the governments have been using the Mining Act sufficiently as I said, uh, deep sea tailing placement that uh, will now, uh, I think, come to the fore in discussions with Wafi Golpu environmental permit being uh, granted and uh, the deep sea mining in Solwar One in Matanai that we've been campaigning against, uh, deep sea tailing placement in Madang. Um, and now um, Wafi in Morobe. So sand mining just comes under that and that, that's what the authorities are doing, which I think is uh, most unsatisfactory. True. So, so um, as interested sons of Medang um, also supporting the communities there against the mining proposal, um, what's the sort of status now? Maybe once you can describe where we are at, I can add to that. Yeah. yeah, Bradley, uh, <clears throat> when we were first alerted uh, on this uh, development to take place, I was alerted by Elvis Lang after the Sumgil Bar ward members had a dinner at an Eden restaurant in Medang Town. Um, Elvis Lang uh, messengered me and said uh, that there's a development taking place 
and uh, stretch of the beach where your project site is located. And uh, he said this. And I said, what kind of development is going to take place? He said, uh, there's a company that's going to, uh, that's expressing interest to mine sand there. So we got, I got that notice a uh, few days before the warden hearing was going to be held. That was like a week before the warden hearing was going to be held. And that was, the warden hearing was going to be held on the 23rd of September, 2020. I got that message one week before that. So we had to, once I received that information, I quickly sent the information to my board of directors. I alerted them that uh, something like this is going to happen. So we did a very quick search on which company is involved and if they followed the right procedures, because we didn't cite the advertisement on the newspaper. We didn't know that they went through the right process of informing the provincial government, governor, or, and all that. So we submitted a letter to the tenement manager and registrar on the 22nd of September in the night. Um, I went down to Medeng on the 21st and on the 22nd, um, we went into the community to find out if they had anything about that. Most of the communities didn't hear anything about the development. True. So, so the, first we were talking about the absence of a law that directly um, talks about sand mining one and or policy. And now you have the people still confused about what's, what sand mining is and in its impact. It must be concerning. Very concerning because they were not informed fairly and they didn't know about anything about sand mining, who was behind it, and uh, what are the benefits, what are the negative impacts of that. So they were totally confused. Uh, representatives from uh, New Guinea Sense Limited and uh, president for Sumgil Bar LLG and uh, a local company, logging company uh, representatives. They visited Tokain village on a certain date and offered them some food and wanted to lure them into consenting for that activity to take place. That was what I heard from the president of Gildi Pasi. But he stood up, his, his name is Lawrence Kaket. He stood up and his community stood up against those guys, that delegation from New Guinea Sense Limited and um, the local landowner company, logging company, and the president from uh, Sumgil Bar LLG at Tokain and told them to take their food and go away. And they demanded that you should come back and, and give us more awareness on this more than 10 times. And they disappeared and never came back. When they disappeared, we were there. So it was in this state of confusion and, and lack of information that we arrived. And so when we presented to the communities the objection letter that we wrote to um, MRA and a complaint letter to SIPA against this development, they all agreed that they were not informed, prior informed, fairly, and so they do not want that activity to take place. And they demanded that more warden hearings should be conducted so that they have a fair idea, fair knowledge of what sand mining is, its advantages, what kind of benefit they will get, and the imp negative impact. So on the 22nd of uh, September 2020, we uh, submitted that uh, objection letter to Stanley Nakatil, the tenement manager and uh, registrar for MRA. I emailed it to him from Magyar, Magyar uh, Paris, in the night, okay. we, we sent that email, our first objection letter and a complaint letter with all the signatures from the communities we collected from as far as Taledi all the way to Kimadi. Okay, Mr. Magun, we'll have more of these discussions. This is In Focus. We will be back with more on the other side.
Welcome back to the program. We continue our discussion on sand mining. Now, gentlemen, before the break, uh, Mr. Magun, you spoke about the warden hearings. We understand there were only two conducted um, in the concerned areas. Yeah. Uh, the, the first two, like I said, one was done on the 23rd at Talidik. And on the same day, uh, in the evening, they conducted another one at uh, Kang Kangur, which uh, Talidik is about 40 kilometers from Medeng town. And uh, Kangur is about 90 kilometers from Medeng town. So you can see the gap there. In between Talidik and Kangur, there's more than 10 villages. And at uh, Talidik, we only had about 10 people, uh, 10 men. And Talidik, the warden hearing was held at Talidik uh, Marketplace, which is first of all not supposed to be done there. They're supposed to conduct the warden hearing in the village where you can have men, women, and children, the people with, with disabilities. All of them should be there to express their uh, concerns on that issue. Unfortunately, that was not done. Okay. So at Kangul, there were about less than 300 people, less than 200. They were there. And they were there because we were able to bring them on vehicles. And those that can walk to the, the to Borden hearing, they walk, especially from Malas, or they walk to Kangul. Other than that, if we were not on the ground, if our partners were not on the ground to bring the community, I don't think you would, there would have been more anyway. than 200 people. Because like I said earlier on, people were in darkness. They didn't know about you know, these things going to take place. Uh, those board members that were brought into the Tidan Valley restaurant and uh, dined with the New Guinea Sense Limited or their associates, when they went home, they didn't do awareness in the communities. Mm -hmm. So the majority of the communities more than 10,500 people, they were all in darkness. All right. So, Sir, Sir Anol, uh, according to law, is it, um, are two warden hearings um, adequate? It, it depends on the locality, the number of uh, impacted uh, people. In our view, this uh, particular area, which stretches for about 50 kilometres from one end to the other, involving... Uh, like when said, 10,500 people. So quite clearly, in our view, two warden searing many, many kilometres apart, involving a total of only less than 300 people, is grossly inadequate and it quite simply does not comply with the requirements of the Mining Act. Okay. So... As part of the warden hearings, um, you know, many people living there along the impacted communities would want to know um, where they will go and, you know, uh, what's going to happen to them because they obviously will uh, live off the sea and the beaches, of course, mm. uh, the place where you take off into the sea. So what actually happens? Was that communicated to the people there? Uh, that, was, that was their biggest fear. Because most of the, you know, villages connect with villages from the coast to the inland. So the village, the villages that are, you know, next to the beach, that's where the project is going to take place. When you remove them in order to mine the sand, where are you going to relocate them? Because just inland, there's another village. Or same village, but that stretches inland, like, like, for example, Karkum. There's Karkum one, one that's on the coast, and then they have other car, two and three inland, and then they connect with Basken. So you remove the people at Karkum who are staying next to the beach, where are you going to relocate them? True. And then you have Sarang people there, Sarang plantation, and then where are you going to put them? There's Basken up there. You can't relocate them to Basken. There's going to be a fight. True. And with the, with the experience of, obviously, in, in North Coast from um, the displaced Manam Islanders who are there, with that experience, you know, um, where can you resettle these other people from Medang? Exactly. You're not only going to resettle the villages, you are destroying the infrastructure, the road, 
Obviously, the road is running along the coast and uh, mining is going to uh, cover one kilometer from the beach into the sea and from the beach one kilometer into the land. Now, you remember, if you come from Medeng, you will know that the roads are just next to the coast. So you're talking about removing, uh, going one kilometer into the land. That's getting rid of the villages, getting rid of the roads, getting rid of the schools, getting rid of the health centers, all and the economic activities, projects, cocoa plantations, uh, vanilla plantation, copra plantations, buai plantations. Man, that's going to be a devastating negative impact on all fronts, socioeconomic, um, environment, biodiversity, uh, livelihoods of the people is going to be impacted greatly. Have you, have, have, uh, MRA, has MRA conducted a study on that uh, prior to talking about issuing an exploration license to a mining company? Or are you just going to go ahead and bulldoze the process and issue an exploration license? And then after that, when they fulfill that process, then they apply for an environmental permit and SIPA will give it to them. Without considering all those negative impacts that's going to take place and that's going to devastate the lives of the people and the environment and the social services, economic services, infrastructure services. That's why the people are rising up and saying no to this exploitation. Mr. Magun, we'll go for a break now and we'll uh, continue on with this conversation. This is In Focus. We will continue after the break. Yes, this is In Focus and we still have our guests in the studio with us. Um, gentlemen, um, the National Geography, of course. National Geographic noted that Singapore in 2017 imported 80 million tons of uh, sand from, from Cambodia mm. to build its, obviously, its cities. Just imagine if it was in, in Papua New Guinea and basically in Medang. Yeah, Bradley, it's, it's quite threatening because this sand is just next to the villages. And uh, along... From Sung uh, from uh, Murunas all the way to Kimadi, that black stretch of black sandy beach, that's uh, currently prime uh, site for the leatherbacks uh, to come and nest, or they've been coming and nesting. And it's not only leatherback turtles; it's green turtles and uh, crabs, and you talk about that. And then you have the seagrass, you have the mangroves and you have the corals. Now one kilometer in, if you do the mining, you're destroying not just the black sand, you're de destroying the mangroves. And the, the life that also sustains on it. Seagrass, yes. corals. Now mangroves, yeah. That's mangroves and seagrass. That's where the fish breed, spawn and breed. And they regenerate. And then they supply the ocean uh, with the po increased population of marine ecosystem. So once you destroy, once you destroy the habitat for this marine life, and livelihood blown man too, you destroy him. Mr. Magun, you talk, talk long, um, this environmental uh, uh, obligation long you me, uh, all man ego long environment long you me. You may look out in environment, environment you look out in you me. That's all uh, New Guinea Sense Limited, you talk out long, uh, one plus post long em, all same. Um, all money by come long display or economic benefit when by come up long display project. And big plus true na I buy halavi more communities inside long display imp uh, impact project areas. Think think long you long display. First of all, I've asked MRA. We've asked MRA to qualify to us what kind of black sand New Guinea sense is going to uh, mine. Uh, one of them kind of mineral component stuff inside is like black plus. West are not like mining, yeah. We know there's two kind of mining activities going on globally. Also, we're mining West and we're building all island, walking all uh, ground, uh, walking uh, place blow man or stuff, like they are doing in Singapore and Dubai, all these places. That's one activity. 
Narapla activity where you come up to India and Narapla lab, they mine the sand to actually extract minerals. Now, me plus have a lot of documentaries below India or some. He got all this lot of minerals and quality back, uh, economic value below all me plus no sawe. Ah, it was not disclosed in those uh, documentaries. That's why we ask MRA to come out and tell us. We, that's our right. We must know. If you're going to mine the black sand for mineral purposes, one a mineral is uh, uh, that like black wasania, na one value blong em. That has not been disclosed to date. Say Arnold, you got some talk talk long one em something now you play by walking uh, behind long old talk talk good play talk talk you play walking. Yeah, it's important to understand um, where this process is at. The the very first process of applying for a Explore, exploration license. Um, and in order to support that, you've got to do uh, adequate awareness that the people are informed and they give their consent. It's called the free prior informed consent, the universal principle in exploration developmental uh, projects. So we say that they haven't done enough. So we wrote to them requesting that they defer the technical report that needs to go to the Mining Advisory Council, which would then advise the minister whether or not to grant the EL, the exploration license. We wrote to them requesting deferral of that. They wrote back on the 27th of November. We wrote to them on the 16th of November. They wrote back on the 27th, uh, Stanley Nekitel, who has went said is the uh, director manager of the um, tenements. He said they've done enough, as we just said a little while ago, that two um, warrants hearing was enough. And we wrote back to them and said, now we've given you notice on the 27th, we had advised them that, uh, or they advised us. And we then have uh, written back to them on the 3rd of uh, February, just this month, that because uh, you have uh, denied our request to defer and to conduct more warden's hearing and awareness so that you hear a good majority of our 10,000 and a half people's views as to whether they support this or not, before you give your technical report to the advisory council to advise the minister. So that's where it is at. The technical report is still with MRA, We've now written on the 3rd of February. Um, at the same time, we wrote and uh, delivered to the Attorney General, who is the principal legal advisor to government, uh, that we, have, we have in fact filed a Section 57 constitutional application to protect the rights of uh, our people to adequate information at Section 51, freedom of information, provision of the Constitution, as well as Section 59, the right to natural justice, uh, to be uh, sufficiently heard. That's the natural justice right to be heard. Uh, MRA, we've given them notice that uh, that's what we would do, and we we filed that now. We filed the Section 57 application uh, by three ward councillors uh, of uh, the villages to be impacted, the ward council for Matugar village, for ward seven, that's in Karkum uh, village, and ward eight, uh, Sumgilbar. So those have been filed, and uh, last week, uh, Wentz has, has served those on the attorney general, served it on the MD, Managing Director for MRA, the uh, Tenements Director, uh, Stanley Nekitel, and the Chief Warden, that uh, if they do not uh, revisit and reconsider and uh, agree to go and conduct further warden's hearing and inform the people, we will proceed with the prosecuting of this constitutional application to obtain court orders to stop them. 
But we are pleased to say that the Attorney General, who is uh, Dr. Eric Kwa, who is an environmental law, uh, lawyer as well, uh, and we've asked the department, uh, given my knowledge of the system, that the uh, legal department would consider the petitions and the requests by uh, us to MRA and give them advice that it, in our view, it will not be necessary to go to court uh, and embarrass the court, uh, embarrass the government if the Justice Department will advise MRA, uh, do not proceed with this. There are no policies, there's no law regulating this particular industry. Uh, defer the technical report and the consideration of the exploration license application and go back and conduct more warden's hearing. So the bottom line is, um, just like in many other developmental uh, projects, give the people who are going to be affected as much information about the potential impacts and let them uh, give their views as to whether they agree with with the full knowledge of the Im impact and how it will affect their lives. So that's where it is at. We would hope that we don't have to go to court, uh, but we've filed a uh, constitutional application and we've served it on all of the principal state agencies and uh, we will this coming days uh, serve it on New Guinea Sands. Mm -hmm. So that's where it is at at the present. All right. Gentlemen, we've come to the end of uh, our program for tonight. Thank you very much for making time available to come onto the show. Thank you, Bradley. Yeah, thank you, Bradley. MTV is in focus. If you have comments on our discussions tonight, do get in touch with us on our Facebook page. We would uh, happily appreciate to hear from you. See you same time next week. Bye-bye.